So if you turn to page 73 in your book, there's a little epilogue in the chapter on the medieval and um, Gothic period music called Music in the Rest of Europe. And it says, while the medieval motet was reaching its acme, which means it's sort of high point, it's the most sophisticated version, with the compositions of Guillaume de Mouchot, it says interest in it was waning um, in other parts of the world. John Farmer and Francesco Landini, Italians and also English. They're not doing what the French people were doing, which was polyphony and motets and florid organum and such. Now, it might be truly that they didn't know how to write it. There wasn't a school you could go to. They might never have heard it very much. They might have heard it once in their life, or they might just have heard people talk about it. But it's not like they had mass communication, and we are talking about significant portions of geography between them. Plus, even if they'd heard that, there's no guarantee that somebody sat down and explained how to do that. And it's possible they just didn't like the style of it as well. They were writing in a different style of music that, it, you know, in the book it says, um, simpler and easier to listen to. It's true that they didn't have very much polyphony. It was more chordal. In other words, you'd have lines of music, uh, multiple notes stacking up at the same time, same rhythm, very slow together. Uh, we have a, a term for this in, in music history. It's called pan consonants or consonants or sweet pure stable sounds throughout the piece and the reason that it's that way is because they're using a different mechanic when they write their music they're writing in something called sixes and thirds it's the basis of their harmony and I'm gonna flip this over and show you what that means so if we had um, Gregorian chant based French music that then turns into either organum, florid organum, or other kinds of motets with polyphony and things. They will be basing their harmonies around fourths and fifths. It has a very angular sound. It's not as rounded. Uh, fourths and fifths are the intervals you hear when you hear trumpet calls and things, the distance between those. And when we talk about pan consonants, we're talking about music that's based off of thirds or sixes if you want to count those intervals starting with one two three or one two three four five six and that's actually more like the modern harmony that we use today our triads the chords that we use are based off of stacking thirds on top of each other like snowmen or ice cream cones these are sweeter sounds to our ears uh, when you flip this upside down you get the six and i will play you um a piece by John Dunstable called Quam Polker S, and I'll, at least part of it, and I'll walk you through. So that's the reason why it sounds sweeter and simpler, is because the harmonic basis underneath it is based on more modern type sounding intervals that we would use in today's music. Part of the reason that we are talking about mechanics of tenoring and fourths and fifths versus sixths and thirds harmony and things like that. And polyphony is because as we go from the Gothic period into the Renaissance, there's going to be a very drastic change of style of music. It's going to become much more sophisticated and to our modern ears, prettier I guess is, is a bad description because that's subjective, but has a sweeter sound. And what we're going to find is that um, they're going to take several mechanics, resources, and things from the Gothic period and incorporate them together in the Renaissance, plus a few new innovations. So we're going to find that from the motets from France, they're going to have polyphony, and they're going to use tenoring and cantus firmus technique. And we're also going to find that from the pan consonants, tradition, they're going to take sixths and thirds for their harmony and combine them together. And We're going to get a polyphonic or multi-voiced, multi-melodied uh, piece of music in the Renaissance or new style of music that's based on that technique but also incorporates these more stable and sweeter sounding harmonies. They're also going to do something brand new in the Renaissance. They're going to add their own new thing into it called imitation, which is well, you're used to imitation because you can think of a round or something like that. And a cannon or a round that we would sing today, like row, row, row your boat, is a form of imitation, has all these things. But the Renaissance will take it much further. So they will rewrite new versions of the ordinary of the mass, the five sections like that, that 
would normally get done in every mass. And they will then make them polyphonic settings, and they will use cantus firmus and tenor technique. They will use the harmonies that came out of pan consonants and mix them together with imitation. And so we'll look at that as we look at the masses of and the motets of the Renaissance.